The South Congress podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. First thing, here with the champ, Tiffany Strat, NXT Women's Champion. First question I got for you. Are you familiar with all the nicknames you have online? No, I'm not. Please, okay, so- uh... Please enlighten me. Go ahead. Okay, so you haven't heard uh, Stratton Guerrero, Stratton Angle, Stratton Omega, none of those? No, I have not. They're all from me, so it would make sense. Okay. Oh, Oh, but the biggest thing has been, um, you know, I did did a count. You've done, I think, exactly 50 matches in total so far. And to watch you just go from brand new to really figuring the stuff out has been really impressive. So we try to congratulate that as you go along. Um, did you realize that was kind of the number? You just kind of working until the work's done. No, I had no idea that I have 50 matches now under my belt. Um, that seems like a lot, honestly. Um, you mean like 50 TV matches? Is that what 50, you're saying? As far as like 50 that they count on the internet as far as like TV okay. and stuff that was like house shows. Yeah. It's right at 50. So yeah. Oh, wow. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. I didn't so, know that. One thing um that's clear, you know, you can tell when somebody kind of has an athletic background before they get on TV. Um, What were you doing before you stepped foot in the PC? Um, well, I was doing a couple different things. Um, I first started with the, with gymnastics. Um, I was a pretty, uh, well-rounded gymnast. I got all the way to the U S national team. Um, and I didn't do the typical, you know, bars, beam, fault g- kind of gymnastics. I did the trampoline gymnastics, which kind of like ties into like why I do the top rope moonsault or like springboards and stuff like that. Um, because trampoline was like my specialty. Um, and then after I quit gymnastics, um, I joined CrossFit for a little bit. I competed in CrossFit and then I went on to bodybuilding where I won my first show. And then unfortunately after that, I got signed by WWE. So I couldn't go any farther within bodybuilding, but it is definitely something I would love to go for again. Um, but yeah, that's what I was doing. Gosh. Looking at like the last 10 years, um, there's been this influx of WWE champions, both on the men and women's side, who did not wrestle, you know, before they got to WWE. Your your Big E's, your Baron Corbin's, your Roman Reigns's, and you know, specifically maybe more relating to you, you know, Bianca Belair also did the CrossFit path. Um, you know, Charlotte Flair went from volleyball to this. How has the adjustment been for you athletically? Like I know you said doing stuff like moonsaults came a bit more naturally, but you know, going from competition that was not direct one-on-one even though it was a competition between you and other athletes how has that been so far how's the adjustment been for me um everything just kind of like not everything but wrestling pretty much clicked with me right away at least all the basics the rolling the footwork um you know everything in between and I feel like gymnastics is like the perfect sport to set you up for wrestling um but I I definitely feel like being a high level athlete before coming to wrestling helps tremendously. Um, I feel like, you know, football, it's like footwork and stuff like that. And same with volleyball. Um, but yeah, I definitely think the gymnasts have such a big leg up on everybody. Everybody kind of comes in, they show up, they get a look at you, they look at your strengths and they come up with a character. Um, initially, Tiffany Stratton was daddy's little princess. Um, Mm -hmm. was that coming in a real natural role for you? Was it something you had to grow into? Uh, yeah, no, um, it was not something that I was like, when I came to WWE, I was like, oh, I'm going to be this like badass character. I'm going to be something like dark and mysterious and like jacked. Cause I was coming in super jacked at the time because of my bodybuilding career. But, um, I kind of realized that that was like the norm in wrestling. I felt like a lot of people, kind of have that vibe going on um that like darker vibe and that was like the cool thing for the woman in wrestling and I kind of wanted it to be like something different out of the box um so 
that's when I came up with the Tiny Little Rich Girl character. I felt like nobody was doing it. Nobody was acting spoiled, like a spoiled broad in their wrestling and stuff like that. So I pitched that and um, it was definitely something to get used to at first. Um, my first couple promos were definitely very cringy. <laughs> um, but um, I eventually got used to it and I like full on embraced it and I just like dropped the um, caring what others think. And when I would do my promos, I would just go full on into it. And I, I embraced the character fully. And then it kind of just developed into kind of like who I am outside of wrestling, but you know, like more over the top and um, just like more extra altogether. Absolutely. Absolutely. So most of your work has been, you know, at NXT proper around Florida, maybe going a little bit up the Eastern seaboard. Um, but you know, you've done like pay-per-view pay-per-views in different cities. What's the adjustment? Like, is there an adjustment? Like you're familiar with the NXT crowd. You see them every week. They're going to respond to certain cues. They're super familiar with the moves going on the road. Like, has there been anything different that you've learned anything different that you've seen? Yeah, I definitely, uh, I like it better. I love being in huge arenas. I love the roaring crowds. I feel like when I made my entrance at Sand and Deliver, it was the my first uh, premium live event with a huge crowd. And when I made my entrance, I definitely feel like I was exactly where I needed to be. I felt like I was born for this. Um, so I definitely thrive when there is a huge crowd because I just feel like um, you feel like a star. Mm -hmm. And when you're you know, performing in front of the same crowd every week, it gets old. It gets kind of um, like they start to just react to react. Like it's not actual, you know, authentic reactions. And I feel like in the arena, it was just, it was so different. It was exhilarating and I loved it. You're in this really unique ecosystem with people who also came in and wrestled, you know, through the PC first. And a few people like, you know, you have your Roxanne Perez's who came up, you know, wrestling around Texas. Um, you know, what is that locker room like for you? You know, it's you, it's, it's the held, you know, brand new. Um, you know, you have Nikita Lyons around there. You have Lyra Valkyria. What, what's it been like coming up with these other women at the same time? Um, you know, I can't, I don't really know what the locker room was like before mm -hmm. all the athletes came in. Um, but I definitely feel like there is a little battle between, you know, the women that were wrestlers before coming to WWE and then the athletes. Um, there's always just like a little battle going on between like, who's the better wrestler? They weren't wrestling before WWE. Um, we were wrestlers before this, like, like all that kind of stupid stuff. But um, right now I, I feel like the the locker room is pretty relaxed it's chill um i've heard that it used to be a lot more tense and a lot more drama um but yeah i'm chilling it's absolutely cool <laughs> all right so you're gonna be austin texas suburb of cedar park is you and you and thea hale going at it right yes all yes, right sir. so she's again like she's brand new and she's spunky and, and she wants it bad um you know fresh out of high school um you know what have you guys is i've seen the matches they've been really good the interactions are good what's your take on her specifically is she a worthwhile challenger to your title and how do you see that title match playing out yeah um i definitely think the hill uh she's very good for her age but again like for her age she is 19 years old she's very inexperienced um she's had her hand held through this entire journey in nxt um she has people in her corner kind of like telling her what to do like even for my match she had charlie dempsey out there she had drew gulak andre chase duke hudson helping her through this match um and she has not yet showed that she is able to stand on her own yet and I have been on my own from the get-go, from the very beginning. I didn't have one person holding my hand, helping me through all my matches and through promos and stuff like that. I figured it all out on my own. Um, I really don't think that Thea is the woman that is going to take the title off of me. Um, I don't see that happening anytime soon, but I will give her her best match of her life. Absolutely. All right, champ, last thing. You've been there for about two years you've seen it all i'm sure you watch a lot of tape 
Who's the dream match right now, July 20th, 2023? Is there somebody you're looking at? Like, that's who I want to run down when it's time. Um, I mean, I want to wrestle the best women's wrestler in the world. And I truly believe that Charlotte Flair is that girl. Um, and I think her and I would have amazing chemistry in the ring. Uh, I think it would be a must-see match. Um, yeah, Charlotte Flair is my dream match for sure. Absolutely. Champ, I cannot wait to see you live and in person defend the title next weekend. All right. Thank you so much for having me. It's appreciated. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay.